Hi, I'm Sean with the Sacramento History Museum, and this is another episode of Museum Mondays. It's July, we are talking baseball. We are at William Land Park, founded by Freeport and Sutterville, and we are specifically at the Doc Oliver Fields, named for Dr. A.A. A. Oliver. He was a promoter of youth baseball, and this has been the Elysian Fields for generations of high school baseball. Uh, probably a horror show for the outfielders because these fields have no fences. If somebody hits a ball between the gaps, you are running for a long time, chasing the ball, or running around the bases. But it's easy to imagine a lot of high school baseball players who went on to the pros having played here at some point. Dusty Baker, Darren Oliver, uh, Joe Marty, Kuno Barragan, Greg Vaughn, Fernando Vina, and even today, Reese Hoskins from the Philadelphia Phillies and Sammy Long with the San Francisco Giants. But that's so 20th century, 21st century. We want to talk about Sacramento's baseball beginnings when the word was spelled with two words. And for that, I want to introduce a special guest. This is John C. Keenan. Mr. Keenan, welcome. Thank you. And baseball was played by sporting men. Doesn't this look like a sporty man? And we get the special opportunity to ask him today about the origins of baseball in the early days of Sacramento City. So tell me, sir, about your association with this grand city. Absolutely. So I moved out here because of the gold rush in 19 or 1849, excuse me, 1849. Um, and through the gold rush, through that moving here, um, established one of the finest saloons in all of Sacramento, and that was the Fashion Saloon. Um, due to the fire that, that occurred here in 52, uh, wiped out most of the uh, saloons, and therefore uh, it was prime opportunity for me to establish the finest one here. Um, and I was also responsible for bringing the game of baseball here to Sacramento. Um, you see, I was born in Ireland, actually immigrated here from Ireland um, to the States. Um, there we played cricket, here baseball, very similar to cricket, so I actually um, was responsible for teaching many of the men here to play baseball. As a matter of fact, uh, established one of the first baseball games here between the Victoria Cricketeers uh, and the Fashion Ball Club, uh, which was my own ball club. Um, although we lost most of the games of cricket, we did prevail in the game of baseball. So. Now, I noticed that you've become truly American because you've kind of lost your accent, but you uh uh, baseball, would you, is it fair to say the game was played by rakes and he-men and firefighters and that sort of thing? Yeah. And you and you kind of figure yourself, you mentioned the uh, fashion saloon. I wanted to back up just a minute because mm -hmm. the fashion saloon came about in an unusual fashion, if I may say. Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, I, it uh, migrated downriver, as a matter of fact, from uh, just up north here. And what I used was these giant log timbers and quite literally rolled the establishment that I had up north um, into what would later be known as the fashion, fashion saloon here in Sacramento. Um, so quite literally rolled from the river uh, to its uh, place of location. So uh, yes, it was quite, quite a uh, endeavor, but it was well worth it becoming one of the most popular, one of the most uh, prolific as well as lucrative establishments in all of Sacramento. Um, and you're absolutely correct. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I was also, before moving out here to California, I was a Texas Ranger, so you mentioned the uh, strapping uh, physique of, uh, of a ball player during that time. You had to, to have that type of physique, so yes, uh, my time in the, in the Rangers helped that, as well as being a firefighter here as well in Sacramento. I just did it all. Um, but yes, it was um, quite literally the perfect game for the West. Um, and, and, and definitely during that time period. It sounds like you didn't have a lot of problem finding players for the early No, game. no, we did not. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, more people than you might think had a background in cricket. So the translation from cricket to baseball was uh, easier than you, might, uh, than you might suspect. I was just gonna ask because I uh, was wondering whether you had to explain this very strange game to <laughs> new people or whether they might, or some of them might have heard right. of baseball back in the eastern United right. States so it wasn't that hard of a not, challenge right not too hard of a transition um, not too hard of a challenge uh, the the ongoing joke was that it was made up on the on the spot made up on the fly with how many rules and, and changes of rules there there have been subsequently um, 
but no, it, getting players um, and, and, and from that game forward, it seemed to spread like, like wildfire. Um, as a matter of fact, with how many more subsequent games there were um, and how uh, this city seemed to uh, embrace the game of baseball over the years. And what positions did you play? I pitched. I oh, pitched. Okay. I mainly pitched. As a matter of fact, the first game here, I, I pitched. I believe the final uh, score was 52 to 47. Uh, we were uh, successful, <laughs> although that wasn't the best ERA for me. Uh, we came on top. We came out on top and uh, uh, got the uh, the win for me in the, in the, in the stat post. Uh, I might, but yes, I was I was a pitcher, primarily a pitcher. I might get an opportunity here very soon to ask somebody in the uh, 21st century mm -hmm. whether that was have been considered a, a, a usual score for a, a typical baseball mm -hmm. game because I, I don't think uh, that would be that would be headline news Absolutely. in the 21st century. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll ask that person when, when he comes along. And you sort of franchised your operations with your and you and your wife both were yes. essentially franchising. Tell yes, us about my, that. My beautiful wife, uh, Miss Rosanna, and um, my fashion saloon. Uh, eventually, we will move to uh, British Columbia, where I will franchise the fashion saloon. Um, so, from my old life as a ranger to owning a saloon to running a baseball franchise, as well as um, racetrack, racetrack as well. As a matter of fact, that first game was played at the racetrack. Um, that I owned, um, and um, having a, a, a grasp or a uh, participation in the fire department here in Sacramento, you can imagine how busy I was. And running not only two saloons, but 600 miles apart was quite stressful. But we made it work, um, and, and it was a very, as I mentioned, lucrative investment. Now, having done all those things, what, what did baseball mean to you personally? What personally? Uh, it was an escape, uh, a way to um, blow off some steam, uh, a way to um, stay in shape, and a way to um, you know, step away from the madness of which were my other professions. What was your favorite part of playing baseball? Uh, the camaraderie between each of those, uh, between all the teammates, um, and the competitive nature of it as well. Did you like the defensive part or the offensive part? More? Always offense, okay. always, even as a pitcher. I mean, our Good. game, our, 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 our runners, our, uh, our, our, the scores were so high, it was much more, much more entertaining, uh, especially for as a spectator sport. Score like that, it sounds like you might be up at bat more than once Quite in many innings. Of course, even <laughs> pitchers become hitters. All right. <laughs> Now, uh, do you, did you have a vision about whether this game was just going to be, uh, as they might say, a flash in the pan, or did you have a sense that this was your part of a, something that was going to go on for a while? As you can tell, I, everything that I do, I, I, I take as a, an investment, as an investment, both short-term and long-term, whether it be my fashion saloon, whether it be my endeavors, um, just here in Sacramento in general. Um, and I did have a feeling that that baseball would be something that will take off. Will will take off, especially here in Sacramento, with how popular it was, um, with how many participants there were, eager participants there were. Um, I did have a feeling, a hopeful feeling, that it would that it would last. Being an entrepreneur, did you have visions of making it? Uh a money-making proposition, and, and and how would that go about? And and you can include the possibility of gambling if you want. Of course, of course, uh, gambling was something that, uh, as you mentioned, owning a racetrack was uh, quite a lucrative investment for me as well. Um, it was definitely a, a part of the game, um, a part of the game that, of course, has had some. Uh, interesting uh, discussions about, uh, as you can imagine. <laughs> However, it, it was quite lucrative and something that um, not only myself but other outside parties uh, took advantage of and, and saw that investment. Mr. Keenan, it has been a distinct pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, it not a we do not get a chance to talk to somebody from the 19th century, so we'll let you go back in time. And Thank you, we'll sir. Did you do? That was John C. Keenan, uh, one of the original players for baseball in Sacramento City, and it was an exciting sport then. And I get a chance now to introduce you to somebody from the modern era and who can speak and we could probably tell uh, John through the 
ether that uh, the game that he seemed to love so much and loved playing uh, did last a long time. So now it gives me a pleasure to introduce Lucas Kahn. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> Doing and well. I don't know if you notice any resemblance to John Keenan, but uh, Lucas is a tour guide with the Sacramento History Museum's time travel tours, and I'll let him talk about who you are and what you do. Yes, um, Lucas Kahn. Um, Grew up here in, in Sacramento, um, went away for school, got my degree in history and political science, um, and came back and wanted to be a part of the local history here in Sacramento. Um, I got my degree in history, I have a master's in education as well, um, and I'm actually currently teaching history, uh, as well as coaching baseball, so another connection to baseball there. He's, um, he's a little too busy to be a tour guide at the moment. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be temperamental about trying that. Trying to, to bring me back a little bit. Um, but yes, I'm, I've been a, baseball has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. Um, been playing the game since I was four, um, you know, from four through high school. Um, had the opportunity to go to college to possibly play baseball um, uh, in, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, where I went to school. Um, ended up focusing on school, which I was very thankful for. Um, great education there. But when I came back to California, I had the incredible opportunity uh, to start coaching baseball um, with two incredible programs, one at Oakmont um, and one at Wood Creek, where I'm, where I'm at now. And I've had some incredible mentors, both Paul Martinez, um, Joel Manfredi, um, who've helped me, um, you know, be, you know, uh, hone my game, not only as a player, but also as a, as a coach as well. So. He, he, uh, Lucas has, for all that he's got going, he's got one terrible flaw, which I'm very grateful he <laughs> did not show uh, today. Didn't uh, bring it. No, you knew exactly <laughs> what I was talking about, too. He's a New York Yankees fan. Yes, so yes. Uh, somehow he survives in the city uh, with that uh, yes. stigma about him. But uh, so you were saying that you were not one of the prep players who ever uh, played on these fields at the spring break. No, so I didn't. I didn't play here on these fields specifically, but uh, we did play. Um, grew up in Antelope, so those Antelope Little League fields, and um, you know, does a ton of tournaments as well um, that my folks would would take me to. Um, but yeah, both both in the Roseville area and even outside of California as well. Now, what drew you to baseball in the first place? Um, my One of my cousins, actually, I think, was the one of the first individuals who I saw play at a very young age. Um, but it's just something that, I don't know, my parents will tell you that I just picked up a, like a, actually there's a story of me picking up a wooden spoon and a tennis ball and like hitting a tennis ball with a wooden spoon after going to see one of my cousins play baseball. So I think, as a very young age, I was very impressionable. The sport was impressionable towards me, and um, just fell in love with it. And you know, ever since, literally four years old, playing playing the game of baseball. So, what do you see about the game uh, as a player? I mean, what did you like about the game? And then, uh, second part to that question is, what do you like about, or what is important to you about the game as an adult coaching? Yeah, others? absolutely. I mean, something that. I loved about the game is the competitive nature of it. I'm a very competitive person. Um, it's a game of failure, and n not often in life can you say three out of ten is phenomenal. You know, <laughs> Hall of Fame numbers. If you do something right three out of ten times, normally that's not good. But in baseball, it's you know amazing. Um, so that aspect of the game, um, you know, it, 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 my that my group of friends growing up playing the game of baseball as well. Um, so it's just something that I was always drawn to. As a coach now, um, you know, developing players, seeing these young players um, play a game of baseball at a level that I could only imagine at their age, it's pretty incredible. Um, but the, the competitive nature of it as well uh, has been a lot of fun. And, and, and being, I'm very thankful, you know, I've been coaching for three years now. Um, I'm very thankful as my young coaching career ha as it's been, I've seen very competitive baseball, like at some of the highest level, in, in high school I should say, as a coach. And that just doesn't happen. You know, my first year we, we joked, we went 30-3, and three, won the section championship, and that just doesn't happen. You know, all my other coaches are saying, retire now, walk away, it's never going to happen again because... Um, you know, it just doesn't. But being a part of that and, and seeing the camaraderie with, with the kids and, and um, their elevated play has been a lot of fun. 
you talk about the high failure rate. I happen to be at that game. I won't embarrass Lucas now, but uh, <laughs> Coach Lucas has a totally different walk on the field <laughs> than Lucas Kahn, citizen, walking Little around bit. Land Park with nothing to do. So um, I was going to make you do the walk, yeah. but, uh, but you could do it. Uh, uh, but yeah, I suppose that that is does give you a false sense of, of, of success. But uh, in the long run, I suppose that there is success to the players. I mean, there is oh, even even if you you know fail seven times out of ten at the plate, there are uh, measures of success off the field. And how do you, how do you frame those for your players? It's it's the idea of getting better. You know, looking at it. Um, getting better just one day at a time um, and not necessarily looking at the uh, longevity of the game because it's a, it's a long season I mean especially for professional <laughs> very long season so getting wrapped up in um, you know a possible failure that you might have one particular day having a short memory turning the page um, as my old coach would say um, quite literally turning the page having you know a fresh start and not um, you know getting wrapped up in, you know, maybe a strikeout or a bat at bat or a, or a play that you boot. Um, you know, it's it's a game of failure in that sense. And I think that teaches especially young kids at, a, at an age that it's okay to fail. And I think that's, it leads into like one of the reasons why I teach and why I went into education is understanding that it is okay to fail and learning from those mistakes and learning from your failure is the best way to learn and not being afraid to, you know, because as someone who is afraid to fail sometimes, um, it's a good learning opportunity. Yeah, that's a tough lesson to teach. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah. And I think baseball is the perfect vessel to teach that lesson. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions I asked John C. Keenan. Right. Uh, 52 to 47, uh, the usual I, score for a baseball game? No, not anymore. So what not do anymore. you suppose is going on there? Pitching was different. Pitching was a lot different. Pitching was to allow the batter to hit the ball, you think? Yes, uh, absolutely. To, almost to make contact. Right. Which is probably um, why you didn't want to, you wanted to hit more than yeah, you wanted to pitch. Of course, of course, of course. Um, why even pitchers were hitters. Um, and yeah, the game's just changed uh, a lot over the years. Um, and it's still changing. I mean, uh, as we speak, this, this season we've seen quite a lot of changes, especially with uh, certain substances that pitchers are using um, and yeah. how that will change as well. And it was, I would say, almost even more so a spectator sport. Um, and I think part of that has to do with the amount of runs that were scored. and. Uh, putting the ball, you know, as I don't want to take this away from pitchers, of course. Um, sorry, Sammy. Um, <laughs> you know, people go to watch, um, you know, players hit the ball. And, you know, that's um, part of the reason why I think you see sometimes, unfortunately, you see viewership down in certain games that are very low scoring. And I think that's part of the reason why you see baseball trying to um make some changes in terms of like those foreign substances on pitchers um, so uh, but yeah it's definitely different game has changed quite a bit what did you like what position have you played in your baseball career? Um, I played growing up shortstop uh, third base um, I used to pitch when I was younger but not anymore um, but yeah shortstop and third base um, and I've coached um, outfield as well as right now I'm, I'm coaching infield so okay. And field. what do you prefer, hitting or playing defense? Uh, playing defense. Oh, really? Personally, personally okay. playing defense. Why? Yes. Um, I don't know. I think it's uh, something about making like an incredible play defensively, and um, you know, it's you're kind of on an island depending on where you're at, and um, you know, it's it's less you versus the pitcher. And I. I enjoyed hitting. I enjoyed hitting, but defensive, well, defensively, I, I seem to enjoy more. And even now, coaching, I, I like to. I would consider myself more of a defensive coach than a hitting coach, um, just because I think it's something that I find more natural. It comes easier to me, and I feel more confident as well uh, with that. And like you say, the level of play, particularly defensively, has, has risen to meet the moment. You've got it's middle incredible. infielders who are it's amazing. Like, sticking with one with their glove. More times than I can count this year especially, plays have been made by some of our own players that, you know, uh, turn to our head coach and uh, we, we say high school players don't make that don't make that play. And we're very thankful and we're very fortunate to have some pretty incredible players on our team, especially this year and this coming year. 
um, which we're very excited for. Um, but yeah, more times than not, we're like, oh, that high school baseball player does not make that play. That, that's special right there. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it's just, I think, with the game growing and, and with, with kids playing more and more and more, um, kids are just getting better, better and better. I think you've seen that evolve, not only at this level here, but also uh, in the professional as well. All right, lightning round. I've got two quick questions. Right. Your opinions on baseball, All modern right. baseball. Runner on second and extra innings, how do you feel? Can't stand it. I get it. I get it. I, I, I understand it because, again, from the viewership standpoint, baseball is trying to market themselves to an audience who, you know, doesn't have the best attention span. Baseball's a long game, and they're trying to speed it up. Not a fan. Uh, but at the same time, um, when it, I'm sure you might ask about the shift as well. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, it... it annoys me that ball clubs don't play a little bit more small ball and especially take Run advantage down the third of the baseline oh uh, yeah runner on second why, why can't we just get a guy over and then hit a guy in oh yeah yeah um, exactly you know being a yankees fan <laughs> we don't buy into that which is nobody does. breaks my heart <laughs> <laughs> just quick inside the, the major league baseball came with the rule that if teams are tied after uh, uh regulation innings then they start the succeeding inning with the runner runs. a runner on second the yep. person who made the last out yep. in an effort to speed up the game and of course last week the giants played the 13 inning game despite yep. those rules yeah, so. exactly <laughs> and i think the yankees first game maybe the first game of the season went to extras and we ended up losing because of that rule yeah uh, yeah all right, designated hitter in the National League. Yes. You I, like it? I love it. I, I think it should be. Oh, it was, it was, it was nice being your friend. <laughs> I think it should be because I think I think if you ask most pitchers, they just want to pitch. You know, yeah, but, but at the, and at the who same comes, time. Like the guy last night true. against the Diamondbacks hadn't gotten a hit in 77 true. at bats. That's he gets a, <laughs> Granted, that is true. And someone like Shohei Otani is pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. From but he has to play it. in the American League. Oh, well, no, if they change the age, he can get traded he anywhere. Could. He could, yeah. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a fan, again, American League. Yankees. Yeah, so. okay. So I, yeah, I see where that flaw. <laughs> see, that flaw starts to root and infest right, you, and right. we're going too much inside baseball. Shoei Otani <laughs> is a Japanese player, plays for the Angels in the American League. He incredible. is an incredible pitcher. Throws think, 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Is um, leading. Leading the American Maybe right now not leading, but close to leading the American League in home runs. It's and unbelievable. Considered the most, probably the most talented player since. And I hate to say it, he played for the Yankees. Babe Ruth, who yeah. also pitched and uh, hit. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, a short story on, on Lucas. Uh, he plays Darius Ogden Mills, the banker, during the daytime, and then he was interested in doing our adult tours, and we were cashing about for characters, and John C. Keenan came up, and he was, you know, Lucas is listening tentatively, and then I think I, at the end I dropped, well, he was a proponent of an early game of baseball. Perfect. Boom, bang, Perfect. he's suddenly John Keenan, <laughs> lover of baseball, and I thank you very much. And that brings us Absolutely. to one of the reasons we are here is because three years ago, the they recreated the game between the Cin Cincinnati Red Stockings, the oldest continuing professional team in the country who came here to play a, a barnstorm pickup game. And the game took place on the other side of the city at Agricultural Park, and the score was 50 to 6, Cincinnati Red Stockings. So they played that game here, and you represent the 19th century, and I'm glad you could spend the morning yes, talking baseball Absolutely. with us. So, Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So tune in next time, uh, Museum Mondays. We will probably talk about someone else who's in what I consider Mr. Baseball in Sacramento. And then at the end of July, Delta Piccamello, we're hoping, is going to recite Casey at the Back. Fantastic. Play ball.